Greetings, true believers. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Channel Chasers Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Jay. And joining me, as always, are my two friends, Tony and Brian. How are you doing tonight, fellas? Doing I'm good. Right. Doing... <laughs> oh, man. Y- you two were so in sync, it was almost like an echo. Eh, da-da-da. Yep, because that is what we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, we were originally going to do Crossroads, but we watched Crossroads, and it was fun up until the third act. And we were like, wait, we just did one day, which was super super heavy. I don't know if we want to do another super heavy back to back. So no, we checked out Echo because we've all been meaning to and uh, it was pr- it was great. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second because we can't start off an episode of the Channel Tracers podcast without first jumping right into the news with Brian. Well, first, before we go right into the news, we do have to do another segment that we sometimes do. And that is uh, in memoriam. Uh, we lost two like smaller names in TV, but still want to give them their cred first of all is an actor named uh, kenneth mitchell he uh if uh y'all ever watched uh jericho i did for a little bit uh he was the younger brother oh okay the lead uh he also had a prominent role in um in a star trek discovery didn't watch much of discovery but he's one of those actors who's just like on everything in tv he was reoccurring in ghost whisper for a while hmm. he was one of the lesser knowns in um astronaut wife's club like he was one of the like not known people that was part of the lead oh. he was playing uh dick slayton the astronaut he was also in uh i know you said dick slayton but i heard dick slaying De- i know but that's what i heard uh he was also uh deacon in uh frequency oh man i wish there was more i, I wish that she's uh, that show had more than one season and uh speaking about wishing there was more he was also the the brother of the dead girl in uh, nancy drew oh well i think nancy at least got nancy at least got their final season though right yeah well, okay that, that, that nancy at least got to finish but uh he passed away uh at the age of 49 wow uh Jeez. it was of als oh uh but a uh, little bit of a fun fact while he was filming uh discovery mm-hmm. his als got worse uh-huh and uh he required a wheelchair okay so they wrote it into the show and gave him a hovering wheelchair on the show oh that's fucking awesome i want to i've always wanted a hover chair yep. ever since i saw the ni- 92 x-men cartoon i was like yo where can i get one of those oh yeah and uh lastly uh he was uh carol's dad in uh captain marvel oh but uh also someone that you might know more okay is uh chris uh guthrie i believe uh he mm. passed away at 48 oh, uh, wow uh, the name sounds super to, familiar um, mm-hmm. a quick illness that's all they said so far okay but uh he was in a he was another person that was in a lot of things uh gradually he was in the new charm he was no, not his fault henry the eighth on Legends. Oh, shit. Cool. Uh, he he played a smaller role in a um, series of unfortunate events, the Neil Pat Harris one. Nice. The good one. But, uh, and glo- various, uh, like, made TV movies and stuff. But, uh, I think you and I, Jay, know him best as. Mm-hmm. He was Once Upon a Time Smee. Oh, I love Smee. Yeah, he was great. I love the whole beanie thing with him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it was, it was, a, it was a cool, it was a cool look. And Hook needed a friend. That sexy, yeah. edgy bastard. Yeah, but, uh, one other prominent role that people out there might know him from is uh he was on one episode of supernatural he was the he was the wing nut that helped them find the uh the uh skinwalker bank robber oh cool but he's been a little bit of everywhere he was uh in watchmen oh who was he in oh uh, i was gonna say watchmen the tv show who was he in watchmen the tv show no he was seymour in uh the movie oh every time i hear that name i either think of little shop of horrors or the classic seymour butts joke Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh i always he was a great oh that actor always did a great job every time you saw him underappreciated he both of them will be men for sure but uh moving on to the actual news so you know how everything's getting an adaptation now yeah well uh naruto is getting a movie good god but there is some hope for this because we do know the director okay uh destin daniel Creighton. okay what is he what has he done shang chi okay he can he can at least do cool action and knows how to embrace asian mythos and uh this isn't just a he's a fan so he took it on he also flew uh-huh. to japan and had a conversation with the creator of oh naruto. With, with kishimoto oh that's cool yeah but uh and, like, yeah sat down with Kish- hmm. kishimoto and kishimoto has said that this guy is the only director that he would trust i mean that's cool still still so, a little nervous oh you you know, yeah, you, know. You, you know you know something funny you know something funny what? uh when the uh during the what's the, the the later years of the 
sweet life of their sweet life days uh dylan and cole really pushed for a naruto movie to be made so they could play naruto <laughs> uh, it was around the same time where they actually uh spent uh like during their like off time from acting worked at a comic book store so uh so they read a lot of manga and they loved naruto nice. cole sprouse as sasuke would be hilarious <laughs> would huh, but that's interesting i'm gonna be cautiously optimistic one because yeah. like the, the thing that the thing that has me even more hesitant than it, it uh I, it, ah the thing that has me more hesitant than it would even if it was a show is the fact that it's a movie right a movie mm -hmm. you gotta condense and naruto has a lot of stuff even if they're just covering the first arc has a lot of stuff so i'm uh, but, uh we'll see how it goes yep we'll have to wait and see and uh reportedly uh don't know if this is just coincidental coincidental timing or whatever this was announced very soon after it was announced that the director would no longer be doing king dynasty hmm. he is still doing the sequel to shang chi but just not king dynasty so does that mean king dynasty has been like scrapped or uh currently looking for a director i believe ah okay okay gotcha but they're they're taking it slower with uh that stuff i mean it's a good idea especially since they don't want to you know just hold the l and accept Do jonathan majors back yeah because uh just uh as a reminder in uh the current year that we're recording 2024 the only movie that's getting live action from marvel is deadpool yep so we got a ways um actually it was also recently announced that uh thunderbolts will be coming out the same month as uh legacy oh they're gonna get demolished mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's fucking superman and you're you're, you're gonna have a bunch of fucking P and D list villains. It's not even gonna be the cool Thunderbolts that has Bucky on it. Yeah, uh, Bucky's in it. Oh, uh, Bucky's in this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, the team last I heard of it is uh is Bucky, Zemo, Red Red Guardian. Mm -hmm. I think Zemo. It, Zemo uh, has to be there. Elena. Zemo is Zemo is like the boomerang or dead shot of the Thunderbolts. Elena is in it. Oh, Yelena's in there. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, Walker. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, th this is the team that uh, Julie Louis Dreyfus was putting together. No, s huh, man, it kind of sucks. There's no, um, kind of sucks. There's no songbird. Uh, there is gonna be Taskmaster. That's cool. Uh, from what I've heard, Ghost was supposed to be part of the team, but the actress backed out. Man, I like Ghost. She might still be in it. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, also, uh, been confirmed that a Sentry is gonna be in the movie. Oh, to be the villain. Oh, so it's the Void. Cause, cause, cause that's that's Bob's evil side is the void wait his name's bob yeah robert reynolds yeah oh my god that is so funny why yeah. because the actor who's going to be playing him was call sign bob on uh Maverick. oh shit that's that is hilarious but yeah uh the sentry is robert reynolds aka bob reynolds bobby ah. reynolds so that's going to be interesting i tell you what that boy ain't right there's something there's something wrong with that reynolds boy let go of my purse i don't know you <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite episodes indeed uh, but uh let's move on all right so with the news out of the way it is time for screen time screen time is a segment of the podcast where the boys and i discuss all the different pieces of media that we've been consuming in between podcast episodes that can range from tv shows we don't have time to cover movies we don't have time to cover music video games audio books books comics everything in between uh i'll start off i have been completely and utterly absorbed into the world of Tekken 8. Uh, it, I, I just continue to play this game. Honestly, this might be the fighting game that I play until the next Tekken comes out because like there are so many different options in this game and more importantly, so many different costume like ideas that I have. Uh, I've been making tons and tons of costumes. I showed Tony most of them. Uh, some of, uh, Tony, yeah, out of the costumes I showed you, uh, which, uh, which ones were some of your favorites? Ada Wong. Ada Wong, cultured. I respect yeah. it. Uh, my uh, one of my favorites, aside from all the uh, all the Nina ones, is uh, I I did a I did a custom for Paul and I made him Johnny Bravo, which was nice. hilarious. Yep. But my favorite of the Paul ones you did because it was stupid, stupidly hilarious. Goddamn Peter Griffin, man. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the Peter Griffin one. I, oh, I love that one. Yep. Oh, look, we you have to make costume uh, customs for Paul because nobody wants his Karen haircut. 
right? No, it's, his Karen cut is weak as fuck. But yeah, Tekken, Tekken continues to be fun. Uh, Tony and I watched the uh, latest Pokemon Presents for 2024. Looks mm -hmm. really dope. Oh my, yes, yep. especially what's going to be coming out next year. As of recording this video. Uh, yes. Uh, yep, Pokemon A to Z. I'm really hyped for that. I'm one of the few... No, it's Z to A. Z to A. Z to my a. bad. Z to mm -hmm. A. And I'm, I'm one of the few people that actually likes Gen 7. That's Gen 6. Oh, it was 6. Oh, 7 was Alola. Yeah. I, I'm one of the few people that actually like Talos. Every yep. Everybody else, from what I've heard, consensus-wise, just thought it was baby mode and didn't really enjoy it. I like Talos a lot, but... I mean, yes. Yeah was indeed baby mode. But here's one of the things that's the most fascinating. And it, I just read a whole comment section on a post on Reddit about the announcement for Z to A. Mm -hmm. And one individual being upsetty spaghetti about it. Okay. So to basically boil down this individual's point, because they, they went on a bit of a rant mode, mm -hmm. they, were, they felt like Pokemon Company curved, like swerved us instead of giving us what they what we assumed they were hinting to to like a legend set in Unova or a legend set in Johto or equals again for the Unova region mm -hmm. or a thing Johto. But no, Kalos thing. And having it at least set in one city which being Lumio City. The largest city in all of Kalos. Yep. And probably one of the largest cities in the Pokemon world. And the best place to hatch eggs in Kalos. Mm -hmm. you, just, yep, yep. you just go round and round in that circle loop on your roller skates. Because, folks, Z to A is a Legends game focused around the urban redevelopment plan for Lumio City. Yeah, it, I I think that's a really cool idea because, it, you know, I, I, en I enjoy, like, customizing places so like the uh, the idea of like you know renovating the city and like getting to participate in that is really cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but jay let me ask you a question as a fellow pokemon fan yes sir because this will be back to my little comment here mm -hmm. the post said that the only thing that we could have learned from kalos was the kalosian war three thousand years ago which i mm -hmm. don't think it's necessarily true i mean yeah i mean kind of but not really because like i feel i feel like if you're gonna go into the uh the, the colossian war you probably you you would have to kind of wait until like uh they they do something with galar because you know more than likely uh the colossian war was between kalos and galar or possibly it could be a three it could have been a three-way war between uh kalos paldea and galar it, that is a distinct possibility but legends to me is all about exploring different facets mm -hmm. of using Real world history as a crux of inspiration and modern cities or cities that have lived for hundreds of years go through redevelopment. They get updated. And, you know, Lumios is based on Paris, which constantly gets renovations to their like classic landmark, like Notre Dame, yeah. uh, the Louvre. Exactly. Nudes. So it still is very fitting because we don't know what kind of time period. If things are going to be more relatively modern, say in the past few years, that's fine. Personally, I yeah. hope it's set further in the future because mm -hmm. because like you know since our last game was in the like in the distant past I think setting it in the distant future would be very cool because also not only would we get Megas back if it's set in the distant future we could also get Paradox Pokemon also true and think of it like this Mega Evolution will be coming back within this Legends game if the teaser at the end of the trailer is to be believed. Mm -hmm. So we got something that us fans have wanted. And this individual, for one, you must have, they mentioned that they went through mental, they're going through mental health problems, which, hey, us here on Channel Chasers, we, we've been through there, man. We always, so we, we always advocate for, um, you know, mental health and uh, continuing yeah. mental health journeys. Just as and long as I you're have... not using it as an excuse. Oh yeah. Exactly. And it's understandable to feel like you we were, we were heading one direction. We were switched to a different lane. But since we don't know a whole lot about Z to A at the current moment, mm -hmm. things says like I said, a lot of cities, especially older cities, have gone through updates and renovations throughout the years. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's time in Neos's past that is the crux of this urban redevelopment, or like Jay mentioned, it could be in the not too distant future. The far future would be cool, but I actually not to mention it like. Like, could you imagine, like, we're renovating the city post, like, Colossian Revolution? Like, their equivalent to the French Revolution? Exactly! Think of it like that! So we would get to see, like, the aftermath of the- What is- it? Oh, man, the Reign of Terror with Pokémon! Oh, I kind of want to <laughs> see that. I kind of want to see what? that. 
look at Legends Arceus as kind of a blueprint. It was set during the Meiji Restoration. Mm -hmm. And one of the notable things that happened during that time was the Japanese going into Hokkaido, claiming Hokkaido for itself, and just colonizing it. Yep. Why we have the Pokemon equivalent of Sinnoh first being known as Hisui, because the people who lived there called it that. Yep. Or Almighty Sinnoh. It only got the name Sinnoh after the fact. Mm -hmm. Which definitely hasn't happened in real life. See? Uh -huh. Oh, man. But yeah, no, yeah, there, there are a lot of cool possibilities. Uh, the other cool thing that I'm actually excited for that was announced during Pokemon Day is uh, they're coming out with basically Pokemon TCG Master Duel mm -hmm. uh, some, yeah. sometime in 2024. And as somebody yeah. who, you know, collected the cards 30 years ago, but never learned to play the game, I'm mm -hmm. actually interested because this might be my, finally be my opportunity after 30 years to learn how to play this game. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm down. Oh, actually learned what those mm -hmm. oh i was for the folks at home it is known as pokemon brady card game pockets yep and one of the coolest nice. features is they have like these uh like uh immersive cards where you get to like uh, like almost like blue skidoo into the art and like experience mm -hmm. the artwork of the image in full which is really dope yep. and, and it's a collaborative mm -hmm. between the pokemon company creatures inc who does the card game and dna the folks that gave us pokemon masters ex yep and one of one of the coolest things about uh, uh Pokemon Training Card Game Pocket uh compared to something like a Master Duel uh is they've announced that how the uh how the game works is you get two pa two packs for free a day two free packs mm -hmm. yep 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 at no cost that, yeah. that is like man that's that's crazy I'm yeah but I'm I'm exactly. I'm definitely looking forward to it I also might dust off Unite again because uh the boy Cerulege is coming in there so. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll see. Who knows? The plant gang needs to rise up again. Oh man, that oh fun times, fun times. But yes, so uh, uh, hey, yeah, what's up? One last thing you might want to bring up hmm? is uh, the homie hang. Uh, what did we? Oh yeah, yeah, right. Thank you for reminding me, Brian. Uh, what we watched uh this week as a group uh was the Netflix um six episode or eight episode anime Tekken Bloodlines, loose uh loosely based on the story of Tekken Three. And uh, what did you guys? think about it oh it was fun yeah it was it was an experience that's for sure i enjoyed Indeed. i enjoyed it a lot it, it was uh it was very faithful to the game and like all the crazy lore haihachi being haihachi fucking paul with his proper haircut you get you, I, I love high top paul high top paul will always be my favorite uh high, mm -hmm. high top paul grew king of the iron fist turn he champion. really he really mm -hmm. is he really is paul's paul's a great dude and leroy was an interesting inclusion but i'm glad he was there there. Yeah. Because I've always liked Leroy. But yeah, it was dope. I really do hope that they uh, come out with a sequel uh, to this. Like, maybe covering Tekken 4. Oh, that would be, that'd be cool. The return of Ooh, the return of Kazuya. Mm -hmm. Another thing, yeah. And another thing that we checked out was something that we bit the bullet to do and uh, yeah. it plus uh, does. Right, right. Well, we don't want to talk, we don't want to talk about how we feel about that one, but we did watch the Marvels. Uh, stay tuned because, uh, well, actually, no, we're not doing an episode on it. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, yeah. no, we're not. So we're good. Never mind. No. Uh, but yeah, Tony's right. It did pleasantly surprise us. Well, yep. me and Tony specifically, because, you know, we've gone on at not, uh, we've gone on and on ad nauseum about how much we disliked the original Captain Marvel movie. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. But this one was way more fun, and it actually let Carol emote and mm -hmm. grow, which are two words I never thought I could say in the same sentence as MCU Carol Danvers. And, mm -hmm. oh my god, face consequences? Right? Oh, oh. Uh, you know, oh. Iman as all, was great as always as Kamala, and also they introduced by far the coolest planet in all of the MCU. Yeah. I want to live there it's uh, we call it planet bollywood mm -hmm. yeah. it, it it was fucking great i i want to live it there it's our new home world now yep and we got to see carol's husband yep which is pretty dope uh nice uh nice homage to, to the comics which is weird because like I, I i i remembered after that that yan rog was also was carol's commanding officer in the first movie but then but i guess you know retcons i don't care yeah retcons I mean, but uh it, it happens 
Um, also, I do like that they introduced the concept that uh, that all three who had, well, two of them heavily rely on their powers. One is still learning her powers. Yep. Had to operate without their powers. Don't take a shot every time Brian says the word powers. And uh, the choreography for this movie. Yeah, it was it was pretty okay. insane, especially with the, all the switches. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah. Good shit. And the yeah. switching uh, montage. Mm -hmm. Where they were learning how to do it. Oh, yeah. The training montage was great. And in terms of Marvel villainy, the movie's big bad, even though a bit well, a lot stupid, actually had some motivation. Yep. It was dumb, um, but it was motivation. Well, I put her on the higher scale of the uh, the uh, stupid one and done villains of the MCU. Yeah, like I I definitely think she's better than like your Malekith and your Ronins. Oh, yeah. 100 percent I agree with you, but I'm just saying, looking at it. Oh yeah, no, she's oh, no. definitely definitely mm -hmm. dumb. The villain, the villain, as per usual with MCU properties, is the weak point for sure. Oh. Not always, but yeah. The the only time Oof. the only time it wasn't was with was with uh you know Kang, mm -hmm. but we, we all know what happened there. So but all three were great. I'm glad that they uh de like hero five Carol for uh, Kamala. Like she still geeks out. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, more, more tempered. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, uh you know, I, I said it when we watched it. It's one of those like never meet your heroes moments, yeah. and and I and I really liked it because not and not only did it like help to like chill out Kamala in terms of the fangirling, it also helped Carol realize that she needs to stop being such a cocky asshole because she's setting the wrong example. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one of the like least expected pairings that I love in that whole entire movie that I did not see coming Nick, was Nick Fury and Mrs. Kamala Khan. And, well, I was going to say Nick Fury and Kamala, but yeah. Nah, Nick Fury and Mrs. Khan. That shit. Yeah, yeah. Their, their dynamic was hilarious. Oh, yeah. That was, was wonderful. 10 out of 10. Comedy. Uh, Kamala bonding with uh, now kind of Uncle Fury. Oh, man. The the scene where they wrangle, where they have to wrangle all the shield yeah. agents with all the baby uh, flurkin kittens is the funniest shit I've seen in a while. Yo, Rod, I swear this is a good thing. Oh, man. It was great. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the Marvels. Yeah, and uh, the whole entire reason why we watched it was great. Mm -hmm. The end credit where we get to see Kate again. Yeah. And I'm excited Kamala for Katie. Goes full on Nick Fury. Yeah, I was so hyped to see Katie. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and Kamala's just like full on Nick Fury. I'm putting together a team of heroes. Uh, she said she said I'm putting together a team of kid superheroes. I'm 23. Yeah. I know. That's right. It's in your file. I know. It says it in file. Uh, yeah. Oh man. It's like how did you get that? That's it was in my couch cushion. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. It was a fun it was a fun yeah. time. Fun time. Yeah, it was. Definitely not the uh slog that we were uh, expecting. Yeah. Expecting. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, the last thing on my screen time, uh, just a casual rewatch I'm doing of uh, Tony Kawa, "Fly Me to the Moon." Oh, uh, one one of my one of my favorite wholesome rom uh romance anime. The NASA and freaking uh, what is, it? is it? No, it's not Kaguya. You know, it is Kaguya. Kaguya and NASA. No, it, no, it's uh, it's Tsubasa. Or Oh, okay, Subasa. Subasa. Okay, yeah, there we go. Tsukasa is Spanish. No, there's a Suka There's a Japanese name called Tsukasa. Huh. But yeah, so that's been fun. I love Tony Kawa. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice, chill, just relaxing watch. It is very fluffy, very, very fluffy. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, moving on from me, Tony, you got anything to add besides the Pokemon Day stuff? Since we already covered that. Hmm. Hmm. Should we talk about? Uh, I think we already mentioned it, but since it was technically a part of the. Home me hang out uh why don't we talk about a surreal show that we saw oh right oh, right. right yeah the vin staples show <gasps> holy Bernard. shit yo good uh, job vince holy shit that was yeah, funny yeah holy shit it was funny and uh thought provoking and fucking dark yeah oh, yo oh, yeah. the bank episode <laughs> that 
has to be the funniest shit I've seen on TV yeah. in a while. Yeah, indeed. Um, I would love if we could have covered it, but each episode is its own like vignette, so yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It's the same why, reason why we don't cover stuff like uh, Black Mirror and other anthologies. Yep, but yeah, uh, uh, me and we talk about them in screen time or what? Happened. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It it was mm -hmm. great. I I was uh, like I I remember I I heard that it dropped because I've been I've been looking forward to this because I'm a I've been looking forward to this because I'm a fan of Vince and his music. So this was uh definitely high on my list and it didn't disappoint. No, nope. and it helped distract from some bullshit IRL shit that was uh we won't go out talk about on camera. We definitely will not. Mm -mm. But yeah, but just know it was there. Uh, but uh yeah, that was really good. Yep. Uh, anything else, Tony? Uh, I continue going down the rabbit hole of CK3, a Game of Thrones mod <laughs> videos. Nice. Nah. And I think I haven't mentioned this one before, but it's these chonker streams of a reach uh, lord trying to gain prominence. Oh, cool. This is the Tales House Bloomfield. Oh, that's a that's a that's a good house name. Yeah. And being set in the reef. Oh, oh. And being a vassal to House Florin. Oh, crazy. Huh. Interesting. At least it's not House Tarly. Oh no. And continuing to watch videos, Jay. Mm -hmm. When I have a better computer, I'm getting Crusader Kings three. I'm getting that mod, and we are going to have fun doing goofy Game of Thrones type shenaniganery. I'm down. Totally down. Nice. So, anything yeah. else? Uh, other than just rediscovering my passions for theatrical expressions. All right, cool, cool. Oh, also, just a, just a little quick update. You can't see it, but I will tell you anyway. Tony, Tony now can fully uh, excuse his blonde moments because he is now blonde. Yep, I went for a rogue a la the Singer X-Men films kind of look. So Hi. my front of my head is a now golden blonde. Yep, yep, yep. And... When I pull my hair back in a ponytail, mm, fiery. Nice. nice. It's like... All right. So, Brian. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try to keep this quick. Um, first of all, continue to watch Only Murders in the Building. Nice. Great. Nice. I was right. The person who I thought was the killer was the killer, but the way they handled it was still pretty good, and I liked it. Uh, started season two. It was the best that I've seen of Amy, Amy Schumer, period. <laughs> no. Yeah. And uh, did not expect to see Cara Delevingne. Oh, yeah. Right. Her and Selena are friends, so... It, it makes sense, but it's always nice to see a fellow dyspraxia person doing well. She's all, especially because she, uh -huh. she's gone through some shit. She's also like a, you know, she's also one of the a member of the of the uh, Tay Squad. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, that's right. I remember now. Uh, but yeah, dyspraxia pride. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she's great in it so far. Um, I also um, didn't realize this, but uh, Dirty Laundry last time I covered it, that was the season finale. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have started new seasons for stuff, and uh, one of them is. Uh, uh, like one of their oldest shows on there called Game Changer. Okay. And uh, it's health, it's hosted by Sam Reich, the, the guy who owns Dropout. Cool. And uh, basically it's a game show, but every episode the rules are different. Interesting. But like one of them was a variation of Simon Says where he got more and more extreme. One was their take on Survivor, just anything. Mm -hmm. This one was uh, who can do the second best? There are three contestants and who can... Who who can win second in like all these different challenges and all of that but the funny thing is for this episode they brought in Brennan Lee Mulligan oh nice who infamously is very competitive ah like very competitive so what they did for the contestants was they brought in someone who's just here for a good time someone who's super competitive and someone who is just a chaos demon I'm a mix and of I'm a mix of both two of those I am I am a chaos girl I am a competitive chaos gremlin. But it was still fun to see they brought in like challenges like a mini um a mini deal or no deal where you had all three contestants had to pick a uh, case and whoever got the second amount second highest one. Hmm. And uh they even brought in not uh Meghan Markle but another of the official uh, case girls from back in the day. Oh cool. But uh, Wait, Meghan Markle was a, Meghan Markle was a 
case yep. girl? I didn't know that. I, yep. knew, I knew she was on Suits. I didn't know she was a case girl. Before she was on Suits, hmm. she was a case girl on Deal or No Deal. Interesting. He even, Sam even makes a joke about that. He's like, we got so-and-so. We got Howie on a previous season. Megan, you're next. Huh. <laughs> but uh, it was fun. And then, gentlemen, yeah? didn't tell you I was going to do this. And it's part of the reason why I forgot my uh, duties. <laughs> Dude, last night hey. i bit the bullet oh i watched the first episode of of uh last airbender ah i'm so sorry oh, no. well see here's the thing is uh as an overall thing i feel kind of like how uh, you described moon knight huh? oh where where oh where 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 it's a, it would have been a good show it but it's not the character that i wanted to see kind of yeah in a similar vein yeah because uh i've got a full notes that i wrote out but uh we be here for 30 minutes to, at least just on the notes alone and i might share them with you off camera all right you, you, could you give us a like a spark notes uh yeah um if you don't mind minor spoilers i don't care it's it's avatar right i've watched avatar like five different times well we start we start the whole show not with ang not with anything but but well we do start with ang but not in the way that we normally would okay because they start the show with the extermination of the air nomads that Jesus. Well, Aang wasn't around for that. Oh, in, in this in this version, in this version, uh, the Air Nomad Council wanted him to uh, wanted him to uh, go to the other tribes to uh, learn how to bend in the other direction, and he was nervous about it, so he, he went. He didn't run away. He he flew to take a night flight to get his mind off of it and accept his abilities, his responsibilities that come in the morning. And immediately after he left, the air the fire Fire Nation hit because they uh they set that night on the night of the comet. And, oh, interesting. And in order to celebrate the comet, all the air nomads were in one place. Oh, Sozin's comet. That makes sense. Wait, Sozin? Yeah, Sozin was still alive when uh Sozin was still alive when he did the extermination of the air nomads. Uh, because he was the one that gave that order. Mm -hmm. hmm. But, interesting. Uh, but uh, and when I say that we see the extermination though, uh -huh. we see the extermination. That, wow, that's that that that's a fun time. Five even before the extermination, a little under f five minutes in, we see a man burn alive. Jesus fucking Christ! And then we see all the uh, all the Air Nomad Council burned to death. Jesus fucking Christ! Mm hmm. Never pocket for that one good lord oh yeah and also something else that is minor nitpick but is very uh infuriating okay and can fly without the glider that oh. bullshit that's bullshit flight is an advanced airbending technique that n nobody learned until cora with that one dude the here fuck you yeah no no yeah fuck you no um but uh we also don't see uh katara until until 21 minutes in to the one hour premiere. Oh. That's weird. Yeah. And uh, the siblings don't accidentally find A. Uh, there's this weird, there's this weird uh, water current that takes them right to them. That's, all right. I don't, I don't, li I, I don't, I don't like anything you've said this entire time, Bryce. Also, uh, when he wakes up, it's your favorite thing, Jay. What? The sky beam. Oh, the, oh, the sky laser? But it's not the third act. You can't do the sky laser in until the third third act or something. Yeah. And uh, another minor nitpick, Aang already has his uh, bison whistle. What the fuck? Huh? I'm, I'm, well, I guess because they're yep. not, well, they're not doing bossing say, so <laughs> he doesn't have anywhere to get the whistle at. <laughs> Otherwise. And uh, and uh, Grand Grand, instead of being like this nice motherly figure. Okay. She's kind of a bitch. No! What? Uh, she instantly c comes in, sees after Aang wakes up. She sees Aang sees us close and it's like oh yeah and she just casually says oh yeah you're an air nomad all the air nomads were gone and just casually mentions to Aang that everybody that he knows and loves is dead I mean okay Whoa. well I mean to, to be fair to be fair Sokka did the same shit in the original show sure. uh, right yeah. but also Greg Rand just like instantly knows that he's the avatar well 
it's it's kind of, well of course she would because you know the next avatar in the cycle was supposed to be an air nomad there's only one air nomad there he's so ergo he's the avatar that that makes sense um but uh one thing that that kind of pissed me off a little bit mm -hmm. is of course you know after learning that everybody that he knows and loves is gone mm. uh, katara comes to find him and the first thing she says is are you okay Wow, Katara. Wow. No, the fuck is not okay. Wow, Katara. And then, and then she proceeds to tell him all about her mom and dad. So wait, wait, wait. In the first episode. But, but, uh, but, uh, but is it, did they act? did they kill her dad? They didn't kill her dad, no. did they? Okay. I, I know, no, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I know the mom's dead, but like, I was like, oh, please don't tell me they killed the dad. Cause the dad's an no, important part. No, she, she tried to equate it to be like, I know what it's like to lose loved ones. Oh, fucking Kelsey Grammer from one day yeah not that yeah anything. and uh, a lot of a lot of the info that they like trickled in in the original they're just saying up in front i don't like that at all That's cringe i don't like that Absolutely. at all yeah and uh then uh we do get like a bit they kind of cram the first and second episode in the first episode um because they go to the the southern air kingdom oh i yeah. mean not southern air kingdom but, ah southern air temp the southern air, air temple. temple yep where ang sees all the bodies oh jesus christ oh, God. including including the skeleton of monk of, uh, yeah I, I, I remember yeah. the scene because that's where ang first goes into the avatar state well yeah and that that still happens but after it happens and gives a speech about learning to move on and i shoot you not the episode ends with with but i am the avatar and this is just the beginning so, fuck fuck all fuck <laughs> all the way all but, fuck you to cancun to cameroon but i will admit i will admit the the bending the bending looks great the settings look great the costuming is great i mean they're and better the cgi is really good like I actually want to give Appa a hug because he looks that furry and fluffy. Uh, I mean, they better, but uh, honestly, that's still not enough to get me to watch it. Yeah. Also, um, also, uh, they're already giving away that uh, that Iro doesn't want this life for Zuko. I mean, they kind of they gave it away in like the first episode of Avatar when you really think about it. Yeah, but they're more heavy-handed with it, is what I'm saying. Oh God damn it! But he does embody the personality of Iro. I mean, he better if they fucked up Iro. That would have been worse if they, worse than fucking mm. up Aang. Because you know who plays Iroh. Who plays Iroh? Jackie Chan? No, uh, the dad from, uh, the granddad from, uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Oh, cool. Who was also in Mandalorian. I like that guy. Yeah, and he does a good job. Like, uh, he talks to Aang when they've got him captured, and he's like, we'll have many talks. I'll even get you some gems and tea. Oh, nice. Iroh thing. Nice. But they're just, it's weird, because all the problems that I have with it are, like, nitpicks, but it's so many nitpicks that that it turns me off from the whole thing. Exactly. Like, Aang, Aang doesn't ever do the, uh, I know that they probably did it for effects reasons, but we never see the ball. Oh, man. No air scooter? Bullshit. No air scooter. Bullshit. And also, uh, be in the big air ball, man. That's fun. And, uh, like, like the rumor said, uh, they've gotten rid of the, like, childness of it. That's... Like, there's no, uh, penguin race. That's the whole point of Avatar. At least the first half because it's supposed to be a coming of age. Aang is supposed to start off very childish and naive and then, you know, realize, nah, the world's fucked up. I need to toughen up. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, yeah. And also, uh, at least I can tell from the first episode that, yeah, they have, uh, they have, uh, changed Homeboy's personality. He's less, uh, Sokka. He's less, um, misogynistic and he's less goofball. There are still one or two jokes involving him, but it's nothing on the the uh, level of the original. Like uh, I hate it here. Like like uh, when uh, he first confronts Zuko, remember in the cartoon, mm -hmm. how like he kept going up the boat ramp and getting slapped off, mm -hmm. and kept going back up. Yeah. Here here the Fire Nation people just walk up to their tribe and he challenges them one on one like a man. Good for him. And uh, then uh, Aang has to save him from being burned. Obviously. But uh, also 
one other nitpick just real quick before we pass on and go on because it's been going on for too long with this. Uh, remember how I said that Aang can fly without the, uh, without the, the glider? Uh-huh. He still has the glider. Then what's the- And at one point uses it. What the fu- What the point of flying? Uh... Yeah. And, and at one point we do have the moment where, uh, where uh, he's flying on the glider and Zuko shoots him out of the air and he's just falling. And it's like, we saw you fly in like the first 10 minutes of the show. Why are you falling? Yeah, that's why you don't introduce but, flight because shit like this happens. But uh, but yeah, they, they do end up saving him with the air bison and everything. So there are good moments, but they're also just, I think enough so that some fans would just be turned off from it. I feel, from, what you, from what you've said, honestly, anybody that's a fan of Avatar, I don't think would be able to tolerate more than an episode. I've heard some people say that they like it. They don't say it's the best, but they do like it. Also, hey, apparently... Good for them. According to what I've heard, it's so far gotten more views than uh, One Piece. I uh, mean, I mean, Avatar is a bigger name than One Piece in the West, unfortunately, so... But, uh, time will tell, and like I said, this was only the first <laughs> episode, but I don't think I'm gonna be watching it anytime <laughs> soon, and, uh, from your reactions, I would not suggest you guys watch it. Oh, hell no. It, Thanks, I hate oh, it. It does, it does seem better than the M. Night movie, but that's not saying a lot. The bar is, the bar is beyond in hell for that. It, it is reached the point where it is close to it's in the, loose it, mouth. It's in the ninth the circle. <laughs> it, and, uh, it's in the ninth circle freezing its ass off. Yes. I mean, hey, at least this show calls him A. Yeah. Thank God. I mean, that's cool. But, and yeah, it might have more views than One Piece right now, but we'll see if, how the fucking yeah. con consistent ratings go. Because of course people are going to oh, check yeah. it out when it first drops because everybody's going to be curious if it's bad or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's it for me. All right, cool. So now, with that out of the way, we can finally get to Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk is the segment of the podcast where our boy Brian over here has created a playlist of six, count them, six trailers. And YouTube people, you can find that playlist in the description down below. And uh, through the magic of editing, we will be giving our rapid fire reactions to these trailers. So with that being said, it is time to react. So we will be back shortly after this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. All right. So this was more of a mixed bag, at least for me, in terms of trailers. Mm, yeah, I would say so. Uh, Kid Kills World looked fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. That that shit was cool as hell. And I mean, you got H. Bill. John Benjamin just chilling. Mm -hmm. Bill Skarsgård going absolute ape shit. People. Yep. Including mascots. Yep. Mm -hmm. Serial mascots, to be specific. Yeah. Who, uh, who knows, Tony? Maybe you can hire Bill Skarsgård to get your revenge. Uh, oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Uh, and, uh, it looks like the villain is Famica Jensen. Who, Jensen. who is still ridiculously hot? Like, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, I mean, she was hot even way back in the way back in the day. Well, it's not back. Oh, it's not still back in the day if you ever saw the uh one of the og og netflix shows hemlock grove oh yeah she was the mom in that oh man she was hot right she's like one of those celebrities that it looks like she hadn't really changed no she looks the same as she did when she was playing gene i honestly and mm -hmm. i and i still hold that she's the best gene we've had so far you didn't like sansa i did not like sansa because all they did with sansa is just make sansa hold her temple and scream and she did come off has a bit of a whiny bit. And like her her gene was way more like uppity. Didn't Ugh. didn't like it. Jean's mm -hmm. always been like the, the down to earth type girl. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh that looks that looks good. And uh I will admit people at home part of this was just like an experimental thing here this week because uh we've talked about it here on the podcast before. I've watched Digital Circus. I believe Tony has but Jay hadn't and so with the big news that came out I wanted to give Jay a taste so he could see for himself. And and it proved that I was correct in abstaining because I I was terrified. I, yep. Yeah, um, I knew of his existence. It made me uncomfy. Yeah, uh, um, I, I was very unsettled. The only the only thing is, uh, you didn't get to see what would have been your favorite character if you had watched it, Jay. The rabbit guy. The, uh, yeah, yeah. I've because, I I've been told that. I've been told the rabbit guy would be somebody that I resonate with. Because he's very sarcastic and uh, he's just like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, no, that. 
personality. That's my vibe. That's my and cocky. Uh, my vibe. Uh, he's also a uh, voice by uh, I think one of the hell of a boss people. Oh, cool. But uh, anyway, uh, then it was the big trailer of the week, so I had to include it. Uh, Borderlands. Man, it, it it looked fun. Like it, in a ridiculous kind of way. I I think uh like it's uh, like I said when we were watching the trailer, it feels like the first Suicide Squad movie, which I still hold is a fun movie, but it's just, yeah. but it's really really dumb. And pales so in comparison to the series. Yep. But uh, time time will tell. I'm glad it's not as bad as the uh, proposed uh, IMDb plot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, so but it didn't include the vault at all. Nope. And then back to mind fucky stuff. We had the Watchers, directed <laughs> by M Night's daughter. Oh, uh, baby, Shama Lama Ding Dong. And based on a novel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks it looks interesting. It's de- it's definitely got a, a nice eerie vibe to it. Also, it's Dakota Fanning, and she always does a good job. It kind of feels like us, but with white people. Well, kind of, but there's no like copies. It's just the silent observer. No, but like what I, what I mean is like because homegirl homegirl's on one side, and then there's like another like version of her mm. in the little glass box thingy. No, that's her that reflection. Oh. They give it as like mirror. a woman. Oh, okay. They can't look on the other side, but those looking at the other side are looking in. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. I- I'm interested but, in it. But... I wonder if we, the audience, will be the watchers. If they're going to take that twist with it. But if we are, who watches the watcher? Uh, brain. Uh, but, uh, but something then... that we don't have to think too hard on. It's uh, good to have Lindsay Lohan back in action. I am so happy, dude. Like, oh, we talked about it in the Mean Girls episode, which if you haven't watched it, go check it out. That's probably one of my favorite episodes of the season so far. Um, yeah. The Lindsay Lohan cameo at the end of Mean Girls, like, put such a big smile on my face. And, uh... It's good to see her in things again, man. Which, uh, by the way, just as a side note, as an update, they have uh, done the home release for uh, for Mean Girls mm-hmm. by the time of us recording this, and um, they took out the uh, fire crotch line. Oh, good. I'm glad they listened. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one is actually uh, not Lindsay's uh, first uh, Netflix movie. Oh. Uh, she uh, did um, a movie called Falling for Christmas. Oh, man. Uh, which is about a uh, newly engaged heiress experiences a skiing accident after being diagnosed with amnesia she finds herself in the care of the handsome lodge owner and his daughter huh and this is the same director this feels like i was gonna say this feels like uh that the christmas one sounds like something that they'd put vanessa hudgens in since vanessa hudgens has that weird christmas movie deal with netflix well it's funny you mention a like former singing child star because uh guess who the lead guy was who cord overstreet oh shit sam from uh Lee. Yeah, that's fucking wild, huh? But yeah, Irish Wish is another one of those like all marquee type things. We were really surprised by Family Switch, so like I'm not gonna discount it this yeah. time. Yeah, and even if it is, still gonna be at least probably a fun ride. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, you know, it's just good to see Lindsay and stuff. So I, you know, we were gonna watch it to support her anyways. Yeah, huh? The British guy. Hmm? He's actually done a lot. Okay. Uh, he was in Outlander. He was in You for a bit. Which, uh, who was he and you? Reese. Oh. And, uh, he was also, uh, Wesley Crusher's younger brother in, um, Picard. Huh. Mm. Uh, but yeah. That's interesting. So, but, uh, that one's, th- that one looks fun. It was a nice little, uh, love ending. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But, uh. Is that all of them? Did we talk about oh, well, Spider with Chronicles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Th- this looks cool. This looks really oh, cool. Yeah. Personally, I actually liked the, uh, Nickelodeon movies for the, oh, yeah. for the Spider with Chronicles. I thought they were pretty dope movies I'm, i thought they had like two i think it's just one really i thought there was at least two huh mandela effect uh, let, let, let's double check here since we're not going to be talking out our butts yep i'm googling it right now as i'm saying it okay uh, cool 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 the movie starred uh ray highmore yeah it did holy shit uh and had martin short in it baby norman that's crazy martin short oh but uh yeah it looks like it was just one thing oh dang uh huh. but yeah uh behind the curtains i told the guys this on recording but uh when we weren't recording but 
Yeah. This is, I've mentioned it on news before when we were doing multiple stories. This was, this and the Captain Nemo show were the two shows that Disney Plus had completely filmed, everything done for, ready to release, and they just said no. You, you know what I would like to actually see a live action, like, show version of? Hmm. The Secret of Nim. Yeah. 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 I love The Secret of Nim. That was a cool ass movie. Good on you, Don Bluth. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it looks dope. Well, I'm I'm definitely interested in checking it out. Yep. Yep. And uh, Jay, just so you know, uh-huh. uh huh. Martin Short was the voice of the brownie. Oh, cool. Yeah, because apparently the the ogre was Nick Nolte. Perfect. Uh, the hobgoblin was Seth Rogen. Also perfect. The loyal shapeshifting brownie was Martin Short, and the uh, the red cap, the, the aggressive uh, little general guy, mm-hmm. yep, was Ron Perlman. That casting is amazing. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, man, now I want to go back and watch that movie. It's probably on Paramount. I could probably, I could probably go back and watch also, that. Also, uh, Nolan North voiced one of the nameless goblins. Oh, cool. One of the but nameless anyway, goblins is Deadpool. Slash Nathan Drake. Slash. Superman. Slash. Superboy. <laughs> slash, uh, um, Mr. Hastings everything. from, uh, Pretty Little Liars. Slash. Dot, dot, dot. Yep. Anyway, uh, mm-hmm. that was it for the trailers. Yeah. Um, pretty solid overall. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, now it's time to move into the discussion proper for Echo. 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 Season 1. Alright, so how we're gonna start this off is by talking about Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. But not yeah. in, not entirely. What I what I want to, the question I want to propose uh, pose the panel is uh, what was you guys' first impression of Echo when you saw her in Hawkeye and how does that, how did that set you up for Echo Season 1? We'll start with Brian. Well, I'm the most recent because I watched Hawkeye like just a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted to start with you. Uh, I really liked her in in it. I got it. Her story was a little cliche, but her as a character was very interesting, and I wanted to know more. And uh, I'm glad we got to know more. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll I'll go next. So I'm not gonna lie. Uh, when we first saw her, uh, when we first saw her in Hawkeye, I complained a little bit because I I, I was wondering why she was an amputee when she, you know she was already deaf. Were they just adding a disability to? To, you know to you know a pe- a check another box but then uh, i but then i realized slash heard that the actress was an actual amputee so i was like you know what never mind that's actually cool and it's actually deaf well, well yeah i yeah that part too but so you know i i uh I, I i retracted my i retracted my complaints there i i liked how they presented echo in hawkeye it felt very much like the mcu version of the real helena bertinelli because it's basically her, you know, her backstory. Her dad's part of the life gets killed by mm-hmm. a, gets killed by a mobster boss. Oh damn! She swears vengeance. Only difference right. is she uses a gun and not a crossbow. Although to be fair, she shot Maroni with a gun, so maybe it is pretty similar. Uh, so yeah, I I thought she was cool. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it was just and it was just nice to see Big Willie. I was I was real happy to see oh, Big yeah. Willie. Oh yeah, and uh, I just want to just on that mention. Don't know if I mentioned it when I was talking about Hawkeye, but I do like with his fight with Kate that. That, uh, she won. She won by just, like, pure luck. Oh, yeah. Like, they didn't say that she outclassed him. 100%. Or anything. Mm-hmm. So, Tony, mm. what what uh, was your first impression of Echo when we watched Hawkeye? And how well, did that set you up for Echo Season 1? The way I kind of saw how they utilized Echo, they wanted to have a Marvel character that was connected to Kingpin, since Kingpin was the central antagonist of Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Degree. And what better way to bring a noble Marvel assassin in Echo who had a run in with another superhero with disabilities? That yep. being Matt Murdock, Daredevil. And they eventually banged because that's the fate of yeah. every woman that crosses Matt Murdock's path that's not a lesbian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's cool that they also implemented a lot of things that Matt Fraction added to Hawkeye, like the fact that Clint is partially deaf. Mm-hmm. And I think having someone who is totally deaf going up against Clint who is partially deaf was a cool idea to go with. Oh yeah, it, it was a, it was a real dope right. trick. And seeing her character progression coming from, I liked the parallel that they were going for between her and Clint. Mm-hmm. This absorbs so much in vengeance that you become an unstoppable force. And you don't even see yourself anymore. Mm-hmm. And Clint <laughs> walked himself back and found himself again. Yeah, and, and he wants the same for Maya. Mm-hmm. And and that was Maya's journey here. Uh, yeah, it was it, it was a really nice 
was here. Yeah, it was, and... it was a really nice uh, like sequel to Hawkeye in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I love how they adapted that big moment in Echo's story with her shooting Big Willie. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, the shot composition for that whole scene in Hawkeye, beautifully done. And the fact that it was silent besides, like, the ring of the shot, like... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. like but the... one thing mm -hmm. for sure that I am always going to be amazed by is the choreography. Not only in her fight scenes in Hawkeye, Guy, but all the shit that she did in her yeah. show proper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was like we'll we'll, we'll talk about it more in the discussion. But it it yeah. this felt closer to Marvel Netflix than Disney Plus. Oh definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh yeah. And for the folks at home, she is considered a part of the Defenders line of Marvel heroes. On the if app. you want, yes, on the app. Which which makes Thank sense. You. Which makes sense because like you know who she interacted Perfect. with and her story mm -hmm. so you know bringing her like putting her in the street level like makes perfect sense uh you know one of the speculations i had personally was that marvel spotlight is going to be the new uh marvel knight uh and if you guys aren't familiar with marvel knights because you know you're not comic fans uh marvel knights was an initiative that came about in the uh, early 2000s or late 90s early 2000s uh where like casada and uh jimmy Pagliotti like brought together a bunch of different people to to make uh, various series for uh, four characters that were out of continuity, darker, grittier, you know, no holds barred kind of thing. Uh, like Garth Ennis's award-winning iconic Punisher run, uh, as well as Marvel Knights Spider-Man, Marvel Knights X-Men, Marvel Knights Blade, and Marvel Knights Inhumans, written by Paul Jenkins, which is like the only Inhuman story that anybody knows and likes because it's the it's the one time that the Inhumans were just Game of Thrones in space, which was dope but uh no. i think um uh connecting that with uh connecting that with the defenders and making making marvel presents the street level thing again would be dope and it it leads into an interesting possibility of maybe instead of being the defenders i don't know maybe uh luke could um you know start his own team of avengers and um you know maybe maybe uh, just throwing stuff out there maybe a certain young college student joins up and a short disgruntled Canadian as well you know they, they, mm -hmm. they were they were good members of this team yeah maybe, yeah maybe but also it looks like uh because as of recording Echo is being uh promoted as a miniseries so Spotlight could also be where they just tell one-off stories could be I know I wouldn't mind that definitely wouldn't mind that uh nope but yeah so that's pretty much our spoiler free talk for Echo um we all really enjoyed it you should go watch it six episodes easy breezy i i think you'll enjoy it if you miss the marvel netflix stuff and uh if you like so if you like something like moon knight but you know don't want all the extra bullshit that came with moon knight uh you watch echo echo is oh, yeah. echo is this shit done right um but yeah so without further ado it is time to jump into spoiler territory so i'll give you guys your traditional countdown five four three two one spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert okay wow holy shit it it, it yeah. was good to see Matt back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Just him and tearing through that, that warehouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I just said, I love that you didn't know. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I didn't know either. Because, like, th that, man, that was priceless. It was, <laughs> it, it felt like the moment where in uh, No Way Home, or was it No Way Home? I, was it No Way Home or was it Far From Home, where he has the scene where he catches the brick? Oh, it, it's a, no way home it's yeah earlier on yeah yeah it felt like that it felt like that scene in no way home you know when i when i first saw it on the on the thursday night showing and you just he fucking catches the brick and i'm like oh, yes and oh my god just seeing him run through that warehouse and just do his thing and that very ended fight between the two of them. Oh my god. Like, that felt like how you expand on the hallway scene. Like, damn. That was good shit. Oh, yeah. Money still says they're gonna bang. Mm -hmm. Well, rumor has it that the next time we see Echo will be in point again. Yep, so they're gonna bang. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And my Maya, Maya Lopez was always my favorite.
favorite of Matt's girlfriend, uh, personally. Poor me, but, uh, I mean, she was done dirty, but she wasn't done the dirtiest. I feel like the person done the dirtiest is, uh, Mila Donovan. Oh, man, Mila Donovan was just, oh, bullseye, bullseye was, oh, man, it's terrible. That, that's one, that's one of the most harrowing parts of the Bendis Maleev Daredevil run, but fantastic, very well done. Uh, but back to Echo, at the heart of it, it's all a crime family drama, and I love that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Toddy said, like, it's really a sequel to Hawkeye and a continuation of her arc, which is cool. The only problem I have, and the only problem I still kind of have, is that Echo has powers. Oh, yeah. Because to me, personally, as someone with a disability, it kind of diminishes the fact that she's disabled and a badass. Like, it's like, oh yeah, she's disabled and a badass, but clearly she's a mutant, so there you go. But maybe that's just me. I kind of wish I that, it, that they just stuck her with her being the death equivalent to Daredevil. I see that. And I kind of get also where they were going, though. And But uh, I do like that their, her powers were uh, not too OP. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were abilities that were more honoring the strengths of her ancestors than randomness. You it, know what I mean? It actually reminds mm. me of the uh, power uh, the power set in the comics that T'Challa got when he became king of the Necropolis. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know who haven't read Black Panther or the uh, Future Foundation, uh, when Shuri became Black Panther and then T'Challa eventually came back to life, he didn't ask Shuri to abdicate. He was just like, no, I'll, I'll find another way. And then Bass gave, uh, like, gave him her blessing to, you know, go to the Necropolis, which is like the underworld of Wakanda. And he became the king of the Necropolis, which allowed him to gain insight and strength from the various past Black Panthers. And he could control and summon the dead, which, yeah. which he actually used in Secret Wars 3 in, in one of the cool coolest moments ever where uh doom has like a whole army of thors uh coming at, coming at the heroes and black panther literally takes the marvel zombies and has them attack doom <laughs> because he can Wait. control the dead and the undead is buck wild and amazing yeah it's fucking cool it's cool as fuck uh but yeah I, I like it a lot um i think her character arc is really nice um her supporting cast is by far one of my mm -hmm. personal Oh yeah, then uh, that was kind of one of the weak points in some of the uh, Marvel Netflix shows. Um, at least the ones that, like Iron Fist had that problem. Uh, Luke Cage season two had that problem. Jessica Jones season three had that problem. Mm -hmm. Like the good Marvel Netflix shows always have a great supporting cast. Daredevil never had that problem because Karen and Foggy were fucking dope. Yeah. Um, and I will say for Iron Fist, Iron Fist season one had that. Yeah, that's true. Cause. Uh, uh, Season two. Oh yeah, because um, uh, brother Meacham was uh was like mm -hmm. teamed up with him, and he got like yep. a better personality. Yep. And also they boosted up Colleen. Yep. Yep. Colleen was cool. I hope she comes they, back. I, I, the the rumor is that they're doing a female Iron Fist. I kind of hope that it's her because the way that it like. Wait, female Iron Fist for like for for the Iron Fist show? Yes. Oh no! Don't do that! Don't do that! You're gonna rob me of Luke and Dan when I can find finally get a real day well also the thought is that uh i think we missed it but echo had a final credit scene scene where uh where fisk was meeting with all the king friends and no the only no the only post credit scene post -credit no scene. it was the one where it had uh you know wilson fisk planning to run for mayor yeah that was the uh, only post credit scene that was there mm -hmm. well, i heard about one where he meets up with uh no. king friends no it looks like uh luke is part of that i mean that one doesn't that one didn't ex that didn't exist because remember Remember after that one, it just told us to uh, skip the credits. Ah, huh. yep. Huh. Yeah, I gotta Google that. Then. Uh, yep. Also, I don't think it would line up because uh, he was. I think he would be a. He would have been shooting evil at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh well, who knows? And it, uh, and honestly, honestly, I I hope to God that that's retconned. Yeah, I get that. And also, when we br when Luke comes back into the MCU, just give him the yellow T-shirt. Stop with this hoodie bullshit give him the yellow t-shirt that's all that's all he fucking needs man give him the yellow t-shirt let let da let danny be there and be his best friend and let him fuck jessica jones in the ass uh all things that are, i i require especially that last one uh but yes back to echo uh 
I also think like the uh like the strongest part of Echo's supporting cast were definitely both grandparents. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Gully and uh Chola. Chola. The yeah. the pinnacle of like badass grandparents. Oh yeah. And I, I liked that it was kind it was a classic arc for Chola where it was one of those like learning to let go and move on from the past and also realizing the fact that you know you clash so much with your granddaughter because you're actually very very alike because i mean that's kind of how family work you usually butt heads the most with the person you're like mm -hmm. so it, I, yeah. I i i like that uh also henry cool as shit like i like henry yeah but uh the man that was in her corner the most though oh yeah the main man biscuits of course we of course we're, we stand biscuits in this house yeah, yeah. is one of those great comedic relief characters he's probably that... the, he's probably the best comedic relief character uh, that uh that the mcu has had yep and yeah. also we gotta give extra points to the good boy billy jack oh yeah billy jack yeah shout out to billy oh, jack yeah. yep 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 like all, we uh, i made this comparison and i i still think it holds true like biscuits was basically on the same level as uncle rudy in blue beetle yeah oh yeah He's not wrong but here's the one thing that i like about biscuits right mm -hmm. i actually say that about all of maya's family uh-huh a lot of them sign in different ways due to how fluent they are in ASL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And without even them kind of realizing, or they do it anyway, they speak regularly as they sign. Yeah, which I think is cool because, like, it, you know, obviously it helps the hearing impaired, but also it lets us know what they're saying. Mm -hmm. if, if we, if, you know, we're too dumb to read ASL, and by we, I mean me. Mm -hmm. On the foot, his uh, delivery of his signing is so mm -hmm. clumsy. Oh yeah, I think it shows a lot of his, it shows a lot of personality. Guys yep, got a lot, also, guys got a lot of heart. Yep, and men rock the uh, multicolored tank top. Yep, yep, yep. It, yep. it is it's the funniest line. It's like you almost died, man. He he freaking. The, my only thing with biscuits is he needs to f invest in a razor, man. Just mm -hmm. like just trim just chip better, just, man. just trim the sides. You don't you don't gotta shave it off. It's a good beard. Just gotta trim the sides. Also, best biscuit moment: the monster truck. Man. Oh fuck oh, yeah, yeah, dude! That was amazing. That was where like, I was get like, out your weapon. I don't need and no we weapons. Were like, yeah, he said, I got something better than a weapon. And then we were like, what? We're like, don't tell me it's the truck. No, it's the truck. Just monster monster truck. Oh man, he rolls up into yeah. that bitch with fucking Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, if you and that's man, that's an old reference. Yeah. If, mm -hmm. if you're if you're old enough to remember uh fucking Monster Jam and Bigfoot, you earned a cookie. Yeah. And probably some medicine for your arthritis. Ugh. Mode. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, biscuits is great. Yeah, uh, biscuits here. Uh, biscuits is great. For uh, what we've seen of her, great character. Oh yeah, I I really I really like Bonnie. Bonnie was great. Yeah, she she oh. she's a sweetheart and like very very earnest. But I also mm -hmm. appreciate that she's like logical. <laughs> she's like, no, nah, I'm calling the fucking police. And then I was like, nah, we ain't doing that. Yeah, and um, and and also like she she came up with some really smart solutions like when uh. Uncle Uncle Henry, you know, signed to her that, you know, shit's going down. She, you know, first thing she did when uh, she left the rink was head to her car mm -hmm. and try to radio in dispatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, we gotta give it to the villains of this story. Mm -hmm. This and his uh, monthly crew. Oh, man. Terrible Whoa. acts. We have Jason Statham at home. We, yeah. need, we need to talk about him. We have yeah. we have Jason Statham at home. Uh, yeah. King Pin's main enforcer that we see his has, name is, yeah, his name is Zane, I believe. Yeah, Zane. But I'm, I'm still calling him. We have Jason Statham at home. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we, so we have Jason Statham at home. Had the worst accent I've ever heard. Like it, he, oh, he's supposed, man. to he's supposed to be a New York enforcer. So you, and he's supposed to be Italian apparently. So you expect him to talk like this, a little bit of a, you know, slow delivery and a droll, but with a, a little edge from the city. 
you know you know what i'm talking about all we gotta do is just slide a little slide a little green under the table and we can all forget about this whole situation huh what do you say that kind of shit but nah. no nah. nah he switched from like a southern accent to like a boston accent we gotta go today uh we gotta we just gotta find something uh, we got, uh, it was just it was weird i kept having to like read his lines in a proper accent to not fucking piss me off and i'm not even from the the i'm not even from the part of new york where all the fucking italians are so like even yeah. my accent is bad but it sounds fucking <laughs> vocal trained by comparison I, I, I just googled it uh the character's name was uh was uh zane yep mm -hmm. uh but uh the dude that played him great actor usually andrew howard oh yeah well, but the dude was a uh, Welsh, so uh, not the best at a New York accent. I mean, it's not that hard. All you gotta do is just roll and emphasize in the right ways, and you gotta talk faster, and you gotta just talk with your hands. That's the one thing that really pissed me off is he didn't talk with his hands, and you're supposed to be fucking Italian. What the what the fuck is the matter with you? You gotta take the car to Harvard Yard. What the what the fuck, son? You nah. Oh uh, well, if you if you if you have Jay accent rears its ugly head on your bingo card check that one off <laughs> uh but it was bound to happen i mean yeah especially it always comes out when i get angry i i know i noticed that when i used to edit my old like rant videos i was like wow i am damn i am talking like a fucking new yorker <laughs> but uh yeah so fuck that guy in <laughs> particular uh <laughs> but big willy man big willy vincent d'onofrio Yo. Huh. I mm -hmm. love this dude. He he has such a presence. And I love his like particular cadence where it's almost a whisper, but then it can go into a yell almost instantly. Like oh, that unpredictability is like And it's the rasp mm -hmm. whisper mm -hmm. where he's like this kind of yeah, it's not exactly like Batman, but like it's it hits that same kind of same kind of note. And also he has an accent, but it's much mm -hmm. more subtle because Wilson Fisk trained it out of himself to be a more worldly mm -hmm. businessman. But it's mm -hmm. still there, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So like there's that. And all the, the ways that he chooses to speak with like his words, like when he kept telling Maya that uh, when I was 12 years old, so my father died too. Mm -hmm. My uh, father was killed as well. Oh, oh yeah, no, he he, he that, uh, like that's what I appreciate uh the most with Fisk in uh Echo because like in Daredevil we saw his manipulation and manipulative tendencies through business and how he operated his crime organization. Mm. But with Echo, we saw that Big Willy is like the gaslight kingpin. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like dude, dude, verbal. Oh, Manipulation is insane. Yeah. Yeah, and mm. only in subtle ways, like piecing out the truth. Like Maya herself even pointed this out. He considers it. He tells her that he considers and uh, is very parental towards her. Mm. Yet he actively chooses not to learn ass out and goes to like even getting in the like, getting a fucking futuristic technology. Yeah, mm. which is crazy. He won't have to. Which is crazy because we know Wilson Fisk isn't stupid. He could easily learn ass no problem yeah but no not to yep and he's... also mm -hmm. it's probably costing him an arm and a leg to uh, uh yeah hire the hire these interpreters and murk them mm -hmm. I, 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 I wanted to, i wanted to i want to talk about that a little bit wilson's business all right i feel bad for all fisk employees not just the thugs mm -hmm. not just the enforcers i feel bad for the interpreters but most importantly, this man's tailor. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, Wilson. Oh. At least go light on the man and sometimes wear dark colors. Like, like, bro, mm -hmm. I get it. You have a motif. You have a thing. Cool. But, like, if you're gonna go punchy punchy and splatter blood everywhere, wear a darker suit. Mm -hmm. what, the, what the hell, Wilson? You know all those suits are custom made? That tailor works their poor ass off. It better not be Gladiator either. If, 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 if 
<laughs> glad you to do this. I'm I'm gonna be extra pissed at you. Mm -hmm. That man doesn't. Also, that man doesn't deserve it. If you just want to clean those, right? Like, yeah. The bill. Oh yeah, that you know his dry cleaning bill is fucking insane. Absolutely nuts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Will like Big Willie was fucking awesome, especially like yes. when he returned. Oh man. Mm -hmm. And like the tension yeah, in like, the yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say like it was almost uh, um slasher act when he just looked up and saw him standing in her backyard. Oh yeah, and I I, I also love just the tension in that family dinner scene. Mm -hmm. My God, that was that was oh. fucking great. It felt like some Silence of the Lambs type shit. Yeah, and just the conversations between uh Fisk and Maya. Ugh. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Fisk went far enough to basically say hey i'm going to make sure that you defied me try to kill me i'm going to break you because you showed me mercy yep and uh like th this circles back to maya's powers i love what she did i may not like the fact that she has powers but i do like how she utilized mm -hmm. uh empowering her grand uh, empowering her grandmother and bonnie to be able to echo her own movement and skills yep. really Really dope mind do, having some kind of weird telepathy with fucking big willy and trapping him in a prison of his own making actually no it it's trying to help heal him from that memory yep but yeah. but uh but still that fucking telepathy was mm -hmm. dope mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's there's no way she's not a mutant with that power i refuse to uh, believe it I, I i can believe that especially after they've made kamala a mutant mm -hmm. yeah but and, uh that those set up in interesting thing hmm. that I just thought about. Huh. Yeah. Powers like that. What? Well, you're deaf. Uh -huh. So you you never learned how to speak and all that. So how do you speak in other people's heads? Mm, I mean, huh. she so she knows how to she knows how to speak. I well I, my head canon is that like she's read enough lips to know what to do in the mind. Well, that's what you have to do then. And, uh, yeah. And and also because it's like the astral plane and you know how psych uh how psychic powers work in the marvel universe at least the comic one she technically doesn't have to speak in the mind because speaking in the mind is just telepathy so li it's literally just projecting your thoughts as speech mm -hmm. so you know that could also be how she speaks in the mind and also just be like how she did with fisk where uh, like a mindscape where she can uh, sign to them private mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. i think it's really cool uh and her being a mutant uh as much as i like don't like it overall because i feel like it diminishes her disability a little bit i think it's cool that it continues the long-standing tradition of native american mutants it's you know john and james proudstar forge danny moonstar all great characters who i hope get to work with echo at some point in the mcu especially oh. forge Forge would make her a cool ass leg. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we also know that she kind of already has. Mm -hmm. the yeah, same actress. I mean, yeah, Scully. Yeah, Scully's dope. Well, no, also... I was talking about the uh, MCU uh, Native American. What was her name? Cahor, uh, Yeah, that's Cahorty. what I said. And you all said Scully. Uh, oh no, no we Cahorty. no we were because because we were still talking about Forge and uh, like oh. making her a new leg. No, I was making a joke about the fact that uh, Bonnie and Cahorty are the same. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yep. But but yeah. Um, I do like also with her powers that it seems like when she's alone, it's just like a jolt of adrenaline that happens in desperate moments. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it only really like pops off when she's in the presence of other family, the other maternal family members. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's really cool. Yeah. I love the suit that she gets at the end. It looks dope mm -hmm. as hell. Although mm -hmm. I I still I'm still glad that she kept the jacket though. That jacket yeah. is cool. Cool as fuck. It is a bomb jacket, man. Oh, on top of that, I I gotta say the humor in in this uh, mini series was just absolutely great. It was great, like and they yeah. did, and they didn't overplay it like the MCU has been doing the last couple years. Yeah, and also the fact that you know about how much time and care was put into it mm -hmm. that you can do jokes with <laughs> ASL. Yep. The, yeah. The the back and forth jokes that Maya and Scully had were hilarious oh 
one, awesome. and by far, one of the continuously funny things, because people are stupid, you could still fleece the pants off of the dumbest motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. When they're dressing on through. Oh, man. Gotta, lo gotta love clueless white tourist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's mm -hmm. great. Because uh, Goalie dealing with those tourists yep. definitely gave me vibes of Stan. Oh, yeah. Definitely some Grunkle Stan Mystery Shack vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he was just buy it now. Buy it now. Buy the damn thing. Buy the damn thing. Buy the damn thing. Buy the damn thing. <laughs> and yeah. thing. Oh, you could actually find that somewhere else because they were <laughs> asking for something not of well, that particular nation yeah they, yeah they're asking well, for something from uh, some navajo stuff and this is choctaw yeah, yeah. but biscuit biscuit swoops in and he's like well, do you know what you have there and like him up and, uh, if, 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 if we're still using the uh if we're still using the gravity falls analogy biscuits is uh, seuss pretty yeah. much yeah yeah I do. yeah you know he's definitely he's definitely the seuss uh scully's uncle stan uh yeah but but yeah, uh, um, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. some of the other things that I like, the pettiness of small town drama yep. is oh, yeah. on point with this show. And as a small town boy, I live for it. Oh, I, I was going to say living in a lonely world. <laughs> but, yeah, I totally get that. And also, I love the care for the native culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, was something that I was genuinely concerned about because Disney, you know, doesn't have the cleanest rep when it comes to native american representation mm -hmm. so because like peter pan Ugh. and pocahontas yeah. oh no also let's not forget the natives in the bug bunny cartoons well that's disney oh uh, that's not disney that's warner oh, oh that's right <laughs> My bad. Uh, but, but, but yeah. Still, still, they, they did that same kind of, uh, native stereotype thing in there. Oh, yeah. Design. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, shit, Marvel, Marvel still kind of does it low-key. Oh, high-key. Mm -hmm. Because, like, there are so many fucking Native American heroes with red in their name. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, re yeah. like, re one of my, like, one of my favorites, Red Wolf, who's dope. But, like, really? Red Wolf? And, and, like, for some reason, a good, I know it's, it's like a ceremonial thing, but it just seems like it's now a stereotype that a lot of the male heroes have the stereotypical headdress. Yep. Uh, except uh, except for Forge. Yep. Except for Forge. No, I, if I recall correctly, both the Thunderbirds didn't. Oh have yeah. One. Oh yeah. No. No. Yeah. You're right. The Proud Star Brothers didn't have a headdress. And uh, Shaman didn't. Uh, neither did Danny. No. Nah, but uh, anyway. Man. Uh, I really wish that New Mutants movie was good. Madonna Taylor Joy and uh, Maisie Williams is fucking Ronnie, man. What? Yeah. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear angry Scottish Maisie Williams. I never watched that movie. I haven't either. We should watch. We should watch that just to see it. Yeah. You mean, yeah. Yeah. Why the heck not? But, but have we said everything we wanted to say about Echo? I feel like that's we've covered everything. So why not get to our ratings and final thoughts? All right. Let's go ahead and jump to that. Uh, I'll start. I, I give Echo a solid eight point five. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It. It was like it surprised the hell out of me, so that did you know that gets extra points. Uh, what one mm -hmm. thing we didn't talk about are, are all the uh, the flashbacks to the different ancestors that was oh, yeah. that was really fucking cool. Love oh, that. What? Uh, even and even if the even though I uh, even though I nitpicked the hell out of the whole uh, Winchester rifle thing, but that's just also that's just me. Speaking mm -hmm. of that, uh, we never really talked about it, but like just during that time, it was like the silent film era type thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also, I love that uh, anytime that we mean like Maya's active speaking about silent, yep. things were silent. Yep. Mm -hmm. The sound design was amazing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Very much on the same level as like Hawkeye. Uh huh. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. They are sister shows. So, yeah, um, I give it a solid 8.5. I really enjoyed it. Uh, moving on, let's go to Brian. I think I've said most of what I'm saying. It was surprising. I did really like it. And uh, in the end, with all the sound decisions, choices and everything that we've mentioned before, Biscuit and all that. Uh, I think in the end I object. 8.5. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. Mm -hmm. Tony, do we have a unanimous decision here? Well, herein lies something very interesting gentlemen. Okay. It's going to be a half point higher. Interesting. Oh. You're go Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. Here, here's how I see it. Okay. I dug in a little bit of information as Echo was coming out. Mm -hmm. It was an in-between period where 
where you, we weren't sure about covering it yeah because we don't know of its quality yeah yeah so i did my own little personal research into it and seeing the amount of detail that this show provided for this character and to the people of the choctaw nation uh, just wonderful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the fact that using actual historical inspiration for one of maya's ancestors was excellent absolutely smart and very great to touch upon something that has happened in our past that doesn't get that much recognition and utilizing native american mythology is pretty fucking dope oh, also, yeah. indeed. and that is also very fascinating mm -hmm. and very tastefully done oh yeah and it also referenced a bit of the episode of what if focused on the cohorti because the lake itself was designed very similarly to the lake that brought cohorti to the sky world i still hold that she's also a mutant mm -hmm. or has a fragment of the tesseract in her but we're not gonna get into yeah. that yeah either or point point being it is a very solid nine show the huh. only reason why i didn't go any higher than a nine is because they brought back something that is morally reprehensible. oh a hairstyle that should have never returned <laughs> oh the rat tail yeah yeah Oof. And to be he, fair, to be fair, it was put on a an individual that tried to be an upstart villain, but got murked. So his legacy will not live long. He also had it, it to, and he made it worse by like putting the rat tail on a mullet, mm -hmm. which was like, mm -hmm. yikes, bro. Like, I mean, that dude was like, he looked like he'd be uh, Joe Dirt's son. Right? Okay, that is not the- is an apt comparison, but he reminds me of a lot of small town individuals that are, uh, have more ill-gone gains in mind. Yeah. Every time you and... say small town, I just keep saying don't stop believing in my head. I know. It, I think it's very on purpose. <laughs> I like to think so. Anyway. Yeah. But, yes, that is all of our thoughts on Echo. Truly a fun little Marvel series. Yeah. <laughs> so, Brian, what's next for us here on this fine trail well we're going from uh how do i make this transition uh we're gonna go from a very grounded down to earth show to and uh we're covering the new netflix and sandler movie spaceman oh mm -hmm. oh pray 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 for us listeners pray specifically mm -hmm. for me yeah. and tony because mm -hmm. remember this is the one that has the alien that takes the form of a giant spider giant voice giant talking spider giant voiced talking by sp paul dano voiced by paul dano and it the movie takes place in deep space one of tony and i's like most feared environments besides deep ocean mm -hmm. i'm so, there with you on the spider not on the but but brian you know what they say about space right no one can hear you scream yeah no one can hear you scream exactly but that's for <laughs> next on the channel chasers podcast all right well with that being said that wraps us up nicely until next time we'll catch you when tony and i face our fears and uh you know confront a giant talking space spider we'll see you then excelsior true believers